Hey guys, Mike Sorg, Basic Sorgonomics at Sorgatron on the Twitter. Happy Apple Day, or happy post-Apple Day. This is the, I'm figuring out how I'm going to afford all this crap day for a lot of you guys out there. We had a big Apple announcement, and um, I think I'm going to give you mostly a rundown here and uh, kind of what I think about things. Well, first, I'm an Apple fan. I'm excited and wish I had more money. Period. That's kind of where I'm starting with. So, so if you're kind of wondering where we're going with this kind of thing, and everything uh, uh, yesterday, uh, uh, even the underwhelming was uh, still something I have on my wish list. Uh, and uh, as far as that goes, I'm kind of, I'm kind of still trying to decide what to think about. Of course, the long rumored and and um, um, not shown for for a long time, and finally showing up. Apple TV was was one of the big ones there. Now, this isn't going to be so much of a productivity thing for me, I think. Um, this, this is, all, of course, all about entertainment. Uh, we're finally adding an app ecosystem to this. We're adding Siri, video games, which I am mostly excited about the video games. Um, and we have a Siri, re the Siri remote, which has a Siri button and a touchpad. And it looks like we have a little bit of, um, you know, our, our accelerometer kind of situation as well as they showed off some kind of uh, Wii kind of Wii mote kind of motions as they were playing video games in the demo yesterday. Um, this definitely has me excited. As somebody who's already been playing uh, video games on his uh, TV, that sounds weird, uh, via one of these devices i have a fire tv and i know i i, I was i was excited yesterday when i found out uh, pac-man 256 is on there which i'm pretty sure i'm going to drop another eight bucks on unlimited coins so i can play it on the tv like that too and again that's like a 35 dollar or whatever uh dongle that goes in there this is a 150 dollar to start device but this is a device that I know is going to be comparable to my phone that's over there because I'm doing periscope this is something that's going to be comparable, and I'm hoping something like I've been really uh, entertained by the Lara Croft Go game, and I love that I can pick up my iPad, my iPad 3, and just play it there, play it on my phone on the go. It doesn't matter, and I love the idea that maybe I'll be able to, I'm hoping these are going to be universal apps. I don't really see why they wouldn't do it that way, and now you can iCloud sync those games from your phone up to the TV you have the same swipe gestures for that one because it's kind of like on a grid and you you, you move you move a, a kind of like a, a game board kind of thing uh, with these uh, with these go games that, that Square's been doing and that, that it's a beautiful game on my iPad it's a beautiful game on my iPhone and it's gonna be an even beautifuler game beautifuler are we doing that up on my 42 inch TV you know, this thing has uh, their A8 processor, which I think off the top of my head might be equivalent to the last iPhone, last year's iPhone. Uh, I, I don't know. I didn't ch catch what the specs were for this year's. I think that's going to be a pretty big game changer. Over the years, we've had our Ouya's, we've had our Android TVs, we have these boxes that um, ha that bring video games to your TV, but it's always been disjointed for me, me because I'm an Apple user, of course, and so nothing carries over, and I don't think it would carry over anyways if you were on uh, Android or anything, too, uh, because they're, you know, the Android ecosystem, you know, stuff like that. I'm not sure if they do the cloud sync for games or anything like that, uh, but to have that all-in-one ecosystem on my TV. Now, the question I'm going to have is, are we going to get all the other stuff right away? Are we going to have to wait for all these things? Am I going to have to wait for my WWE network to pop up on there? Are we going to wait for my Amazon uh, uh, Instant TV to go in there? That's going to be a question mark for me. Um, and that might be the reason why I have my other dongles. I don't think my Chromecast is going anywhere, but my, my Fire TV is definitely going to be questionable. It's nice. And I, I'm not in a situation where I have multiple TVs that I need to put a dongle somewhere. But maybe eventually I am. Um, sooner or later, I'm going to have to buy some new TVs for for my office, say, or maybe down here in the studio. It would be nice to be able to throw a dongle in. And have, you know, what I need is an HDMI to old school TV adapter so I can use all these things. Because I have a, a original generation uh, a Roku up on in the office because again i have old t tube tvs because i don't really need more than that for say monitors here in the studio or, or the office or anything like that they're perfectly suitable for what we're doing for the big you know i want to enjoy this film etc thing it's the tv 42 inch nice vizio um and that's that's the place that's the display room when it comes to these sorts of things so that's my thoughts on apple tv i think mostly um um 
one, you know people are going to buy it. It's going to do insane. There's no question mark versus the way Apple TV had been in the past. It may actually get me to buy things through iTunes instead of Amazon. I buy through Amazon now because it's on almost every device. It's the more universal choice, and I don't want to get locked into the Apple ecosystem. If uh, this kind of closes that gap of things I have in my house that are that are not Apple, uh, you may have uh, put me towards that uh, uh, that kind of idea. And I do believe they're going to be, I believe they're just still going to sell the old one. They are at $69, which is still a nice, think of that like the Chromecast that you can stick anywhere. And now you can, you know, shoot your desktop onto a, a giant display. Um, a lot of offices are taking that on. So, uh, and it mostly it looks the same, just a little taller for a little bit of more hardware in there. So, what else do we have here? Of course, well, I think the Apple's are kind of the Apple Watch is kind of negligible, and I'm not somebody with an Apple Watch. I'm a Pebble guy myself for the moment, at least, uh, and it seems to serve me just fine. Although I do envy the Apple Watch at some point. I think that's going to happen. But the uh, let's go into the uh, iPhone 6s, and maybe we'll talk a little more iPad on tomorrow's show. A couple interesting things happened here. Um, the one, okay, it looks the same. The only thing that's changed is everything. You have to say that in a breathy voice. It, it, I think that's a requirement. Uh, but again, it, it looks mostly like last year's. I'm a 5S user, and 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 this has been happening. This is the second time this has happened to me. I'm up for an upgrade. And I'm actually wondering, is it worth it for me to upgrade? I'm. This is the second time where I've thought, maybe I can stretch this out to another year. Because I'm looking at my 5S, and even for anybody that's getting a phone and wants the free phone, the 5S is the free phone. Holy crap, is that a good choice these days? Because it's so powerful, it has Touch ID. The free phone has Touch ID. The free phone is a dual-core uh, is it dual? Maybe it's quad. I don't know. I don't know what they're at at this point. Uh, the free phone is absolutely ridiculous in 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 its abilities. You know, I thought this back when like the 4S was the free phone for a little bit. That was a powerful little phone, and obviously it's been you know kind of circumvented uh, year after year here, and it's a little smaller. But but still, I think it's a very very significant choice for for people um, if they're doing on contracts. Uh, other than that, you got your uh, camera upgrades as usual. You have uh, uh, you know more more Siri updates. Uh, Touch ID they say is a second generation, so it's going to be faster. Um, I guess there is a kind of a moment wait when you're doing Touch ID. I'm curious to see what happens. Uh, you know what what is it going to be like to start using Apple Pay, for instance? Uh, you know I, I'm I'm curious how how that card manager works. So you just put one card on there. Some people out there I know have been using Apple Pay for a year and we can maybe uh, uh, disclose that a little bit. Uh, other than that, uh, hey, it's another iPhone. I think the more interesting thing that's happening, okay, there is the 3D touch. Uh, 3D touch, is it? The, the force touch kind of thing. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how that goes as they were showing the mechanism that makes that work, which I understand it has to be tiny, 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 tiny. I keep thinking, okay, when I drop my phone now, it's probably a lot worse than it used to be um, because it seems like there's just so much more mechanical in there. That's why make sure you get your upgrade program and make sure you get your Apple Pair Plus um, because that seems to make sense. And I'm also, again, kind of juggling. They have this iPhone upgrade program. Is it a good deal? It starts at $32 a month. The uh, comparable... AT&T Next Plan I've been looking at, at least on the current generation phones, the same prices, so it sh shouldn't change, starts at about $21, $22 a month. So, but this includes Apple Care Plus. This includes the ability to get a new phone every year. Maybe, and it's also unlocked. You choose your carrier, which is really interesting to me, especially since a lot of these uncarrier motions have been happening. Now you can simply go to ha who has the, net, the best deal, and you have no contract whatsoever that is really really interesting to me i mean to me i'm kind of considering maybe it's a a point where i can 
uh, hop off of our, our AT&T plan and see, hey, does it work out on T-Mobile? Is T-Mobile going to cover me in most places? I, I know that's already not going to be true, but I could experiment with that for a little bit and, and, and see how it goes, see if it's going to be better. Uh, and then maybe just come crying back to AT&T in the long run. Or maybe I'll hop on Verizon if they seem to give me a better deal for a little bit. You know, now, now it's up in the air. It's like, oh, you know, how many times have you, oh, okay, not that this is a better thing, but how many times have you walked by the carrier and they're like, oh, you want a new phone? And I'm like, no, I'm on a contract, thanks. You know, I, you know. now that's not even a, a thing. You could just, like, walk into the mall, have a new plan, and just, you know, on the same phone even. So I think that could be very interesting. The game is changing in the cell space. Um, other than that, I, it is the phone I'm going to buy. Let's be honest. Um, it's not really a choice at this end. Apple, tell me the thing I'm going to buy from you next. Uh, and they would have to really, really, really misstep in order for that to be the case. Am I a plus user? Uh, uh, no, no. I think I'm going to regular size. I, d I think it's a little too much phone for me. Um, I, I, no, no. I think, I think I'm, I'm just going to step it up a little bit. And, uh, and that's it. So let me know what do you think about the Apple TV, about the app, uh, the iPhone 6s, 6s Plus. What are you getting? Is it time for you to upgrade? Are you st what are you sticking with? Are you still wanting a 3GS maybe out there somewhere? Um, I know a guy that was on the iPhone one for the longest time up through like the four and four S's. So um, and he survived pretty well on it. So let me know. Uh, Basic Sorgonomics, Sorgatron.com. Sign up for the newsletter, please. Uh, we'll have a little bit of a write up here in the newsletter tomorrow, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.